Hi. In today's session, we are going to take a deeper look into envelopes. And uh, you might say that envelopes are not interesting because we only have this guy here, which is pretty huge at the moment. It's this ADSR modulated. It's a simple ADSR node with some fancy outputs and modulation and uh, these outputs uh, will be explained by me later on during this session. And currently I'm also deleting this ADSR modulator because I show you that we have some more envelopes and uh, even some advanced ones. So how could it be that we have envelopes and there's only this ADSR? Yeah, we have the building blocks to do everything. So the uh, simplest one is the ATEX sustained release envelope which is basically nothing more than putting an envelope follower on a gate. I put a scope here and create an output on OB by pressing the OK above the plug and rename it O1 so we are processing the signal and if I crank up the release and the attack and give the scope a frequency of 1 so we see what we do we will uh, see that, yeah, this is an attack sustain release envelope. The attack time tells how fast we should, uh, how fast our attack is, the release time tells how fast we release from the sustain, and since the gate sustains until we hold our key, this is perfectly it, so I can plug this <laughs> into a node and call it ASR. Say it's a gate, say it's an say this is the attack, say this is the release, and I don't even need it to be the modulator modulated envelope, I just need an envelope follower like this and because the modulated looks fancy and stuff, but uh, we don't need all those extra calculations, so call this env and yeah. This is our first envelope that that's pretty hidden. What else can we have? We can have an AR, but uh, for that we the gate itself wouldn't be enough because, as you have seen, it's uh, sustaining until we hit a key. So we need to convert the gate to something, and usually we convert the gate to a trigger like this. And uh, this means that if I hit a key, we have a signal that you you did hit a key. So we know this happened and the value of that peak is 1 for the time of a sample. Cool. What we can do now is to put this into a trigger to gate node. And just like before, put an envelope follower behind it. And uh, we will need a knob here and connect the uh, modulated output of the gate there. And we will need, a, need another knob for the release. So this is going to be attack. And this is going to be the release. some nice values and if we take a look at our scope we see that it's a peak <laughs> okay now it will make sense I need to crank up the modulation of the trigger to gate so this attack value gets uh, validated so now you can see that we have a nice attack release envelope that's cool Okay, so let's put these guys here into, not into an input, into a designer, and call it AHR, and create the inputs, so we need a gate here, 
and we need a output, it's going to be env, and I delete the attack uh, knob and create an input instead by pressing i above this flag and renamed it to a, delete this, hover over the flag, press i, and uh, here's my release, and actually this is our final little setup. Et voilà. What else can we do? We have an attack hold release, we have an attack sustain release, but this is not an attack hold release, this is just an AR, like at attack and release, sorry. Uh, and I didn't um, mean it, but I'm going to do now an attack hold and release envelope, which is pretty simple to do. One just has to add uh, the uh, hold time to this trigger to gate and plug the attack value into the envelope follower. So the attack plus hold is going to be the time of this trigger and the envelope follower is going to have an attack on based only on this attack time. This is pretty simple to do and this is different from the attack sustain release because of this is going to be uh, this is the, the length of this envelope is not dependent on how long I press the key. It's dependent on, on these values. So if I plug it, if I press the key only for, for a little moment, I plug the gate into the B, so you see that, oh, and I multiply this by zero, so you don't hear this click anymore. So if I press a key, you can see that doesn't matter how long I press it, the envelope is the the envelope length, envelope's length is uh, not dependent on it. So this is cool for drum samples and uh, stuff like that. Actually, we do not support sample yes sampling yet, but you can imagine that it's planned. But it's also useful for many other things. So I call this a HR, like an attack hold release and call this input a gate. I delete all these imp knobs. That's A, that's a nice name now. This is going to be H and this is going to be R and the A has to be there. And the output is going to be an F envelope. Cool. So we have three different nodes now, and we also have this ADS modulated node, and uh, we can play around this with these guys a lot. Like, um, <clears throat> let me create an oscillator. Plug in the pitch. Velocity and I choose the band limited saw wave and uh, I'm going to create a gain in node. I'm going to create a cone here like this and I delete these guys for the time being. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to recreate a scope soon, but for the, for this short amount of time, I'm not going to need it. And I'm going to use this ADSR simply as an as the volume envelope. And I also create a mixer here. That mixer, mixer like that. And yeah, we have one oscillator. I connect the gate. Uh, 
and yes, basically this is a basic setup. If I would play a note, you would hear a so wave. Yeah, that's all. And what can we do? Let me create a filter here and give it an ADSR envelope. I create a crossfader. Now it's going to be going into X. Hmm, not even I'm I'm making it more simple. Just I, I just multiply it with 128 and plug it inside the cutoff modulation. And yes, this is a pretty simple setup like this. It's it's a lot easier to work with for the time being. And um, I can have an attack phase, a decay phase, a sustain phase, and a release phase. And I can add some release there. And and if I play the sound. Oh, it's the high pass output. It's better like that. From the low pass output. Okay, so this is pretty basic. Now let's uh, create a wavetable oscillator. That's my idea. And use the set number 15, I think that's a beating uh, wavetable. Beating is something like a unison so wave. So it should be pretty nice for something like a pad. Same pitch, same velocity as the <coughs> ultimate, uh, uh, oscillator multi. So I can detune this compared to that oscillator, which is handy. I do these noting sessions for a while now and I, I just uh, recognize that I never did, I almost never did these subtractive synthesis kind of noting sessions and finally we are getting there. So I will add an LFO, a triangle LFO to the beating and give it some modulation. And uh, I will create a filter for this. Low pass again and plug it into the mixer to the second channel. And uh, what we are going to do now is to to use these uh, G, A, G, D, G, S, G, R outputs, which sound uh, strange. So these are, these are not uh, Hungarian words. <laughs> this makes sense. So G means gate, A means attack, G means gate, D means decay, G means gate, S means sustain, G means gate, R means release. So these are gates that are uh, on the high value whenever the ADSR is in the corresponding stage. So if uh, if the ADSR is in the attack stage, we output a gate. If it's in the decay stage, we output a uh, gate on the this out output. And uh, we can use this, right? let's say, by using a AHR envelope for whenever the output of this, uh, whenever this envelope is in decay stage. So we can plug this into the cutoff modulation of the second filter. Just clean the patch up a bit. Let's multiply it by the same value. I delete that cone and plug it here. 
Are these filters at the same? Yeah, they are at the same exposition. And uh, I can give this some modulation. And if I play a note, we should hear this uh, oscillator coming in. Uh, but I need to add some frequency to the LFO. Hmm. I have to create controls for these guys. Attack, hold, release. 2000, 2000, 2000, 2, 2, 2, to be exponential. Hold, release. And see what. Yeah, that's it. These are the tech holder is there. Maybe I didn't play the nicest melody ever. And maybe the sound isn't the best one yet, but maybe we will get somewhere that makes sense. <laughs> is something and we can also create use this attack sustain release envelope and also the AR envelope so if we get into the sustain sustain phase I'm sure that I will have I will want to do something to use the attack and release envelope That's going to be for, let's say, let's use an LFO here. And I'm going to multiply this LFO. It's going to be a triangle wave and yeah, I'm going to multiply this LFO by the AR release and uh, I'm going to add it to this attack hold release envelope just like that and we are going to need one more multiplication It's going to be the amount of the mixing. Um, I still have to move, move these guys a bit to the right. I promised users that I'm going to zoom in as much as I can so one can understand what I'm doing, but I always need to <laughs> zoom out. Okay, this is nice. And uh, yeah, this is going to be the LFO amount with small m. And let's see what it sounds like. I don't know either. I would 
would like to have a reverb on, on this and so yeah that's something and we still have an ASR envelope here that we didn't use yet but probably I can remove these because there is other ASR envelope and using zero attack and uh, zero release now so I'm going to give it some attack and some release like that thing we can do is create an extra complicated ADSR envelope using this uh, uh, wavetable morph oscillator and I'm going to choose a random set like 76 I don't know which set it is but I hope it will sound somewhat uh, listenable and I'm sorry for your ears So yeah, and uh, I'm going to use this envelope as the uh, wavetable set modulation, wavetable modulation, so you can select uh, wavetables of a set using this knob, this is the modulation of it, so we will add some modulation to that and uh, I think I'm going to need a scope for this data I told you that I'm going to need it okay and I'm gonna mix the output of this to this guy so I'm creating another mixer this is going to be the second input this is going to be the first input and the output will come straight there and now we are ready with the basic setup give it a volume of, of 1 set this to 0.5 by double, double clicking with the right mouse button sets everything to the center and uh, let me create a scope here because we will do something a bit more complicated now but the fact that we can do this is going to be worth something because we are going to create a pretty advanced uh, ADSR now which is going to be more than an ADSR so if I hit a key now um, we should hear the wavetable oscillator Oscillator world would require a scope to so you know what we hear. So I create I create a scope for that because why not? Yeah, this is something almost like a bubble dubstep sound so many people <laughs> should be happy that we hear this uh, even if I'm not that dubstep guy okay so we have this uh, ADSR here and when, it, when we have the sustain we just simply get another ADSR 
multiply the output by some value and we'll add it, add it to the previous radius and and yeah probably this will be okay we give it a value between minus one and plus one and center the knob so yeah mm, the second radius r will look something like this and this now and let's take a look at the if we succeeded or not So we add an LFO here. And when we have a sustainer, we're just going to use the attack sustain release envelope, which is nothing more than an envelope follower, but this way we are so so clean and easy to understand. Ah, I'm using an envelope follower because then I have the controls, I'm lazy. So sustain goes there. And uh, we can multiply the LFO multi with its output like this. And we can multiply this by some value and move the whole thing again to the right. Long cat is long. And And add this to the envelope again. One more thing that I want to make the LFO bipolar so it goes if the works between minus one and one and for this I should have a note here. Oh no, this is not the directory. So I'm going to create it. This is going to be input, output, and just crossfade like this. And like that. So, minus one if the input is zero, one if the input is one. So, this should do the trick. I call it polar. Like it there, like it here, and voila. Now we have a polar LFO. I still want to do is to have a nicer scent here, something that's more interesting or sounds a bit like <clears throat> more like what I like is to put a chorus here, detune it, plug it up, pump it up to 10 voices. As you might see, this tutorial may be not about the best sound design ever, but more about possibilities of what you can do. But 
I still want to have something that sounds a bit more like usable. So I put a filter modulated there. Plug it like that there. Use a cone. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna like it like that. So what do I need? I'm going to use an ADSR. Plug in the gate. What a nice straight line. Cool. It's so good to see that everything lines up. <laughs> I'm always happy to see something like that. Okay, and I just need to multiply this by some value, so it's not in the 0 and 1 range, like this, and... Make it polyphonic. Crank up the attack. another filter, low pass output once again, and uh, once we are on the sustain here, and da -da 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 there, yeah, create another ADSR, and if this is in sustain phase, we are going to decay slowly to zero, Multiply this hundred twenty twenty eight once again. Actually, I like this and I just don't know why I don't have a proper reverb here. But uh, I'm going to solve it by... by using my own reverb. That will do it. and uh, I don't know why the CPU usage is pretty low. Probably my sound crowd is having some trouble, but um, yeah, this is a Zoom H5 that I'm using currently. Um, it's not designed for stuff like this, or I don't know, but uh, it works pretty well for me in most of the cases, so sorry if you hear that.
actually indie and I like this sound. Um, I just can't share it like one patch because there's this reverb behind it, but uh, yeah, reverbs are essential for pads and this is a pretty heavy pad with lots of modulation, lots of envelopes, lots of uh, things going on at the same time and uh, as far as I see I have three oscillators, two wavetable oscillator, one band-limited simple oscillator. The wave wavetables are also band-limited so don't worry. You just can't load your custom ones yet, but maybe we will find a solution or maybe you can we will be able to create some wavetables later on, but currently wavetables are not uh, such high priority. Uh, yeah, four filters, pretty heavy stuff, and uh, it sounds nice. So, I hope you had fun, and I hope this was uh, useful and helpful, and uh, I hope you will <laughs> you will use the and therefore outputs of the envelopes <laughs> in the future because they really help to do a lot and uh, especially for long sense for for plaques it makes no sense because there's zero attack there's no zero sustain and uh, the decay and the release are connected uh, together so for plaque sounds in most of the cases the envelope follower do, will do the job and for keys as well but for pets I think this is uh, an essential thing and um, it helps to do sounds you want and uh, even sketching sounds like this makes sense so I didn't know where I will end up even five minutes ago I had no clue that I will have a pet that sounds somehow nice but in the end it sounds nice and uh, I'm happy with it. So that's uh, our session for today and uh, I hope you had fun and I hope you will have fun noting and I hope you, you found these uh, things useful and uh, yeah you can save these envelopes for yourself and you can grab this patch from our page and um, see you soon and happy noting and subscribe if you like this channel and share everything about Alpha Forever with everyone. <laughs> we love it. So yeah, have fun and happy noting and bye bye.